Hi, Richard Gladwell here from Sail World, here with Grant Dalton um, in the Cookson Shed, and we just uh, had a look at the AC72. Grant, how are things going in terms of where the program's up to? Well, we can't, you can't launch a boat till July anyway, under the protocol, and so we're on schedule for that. And we set a build schedule when we started in November last year, we seem to be meeting that. We're at dry fit now, all the componentry is pretty much finished, we're now in the final paint. And within a couple of weeks it'll leave the yard and all the giant jigsaw pieces will turn up at our base in uh, West Haven and we'll stick it all together. Yeah. So what date are you looking at for a launch date? Uh, honestly we've got to move it around a little bit but officially we've locked in on the 21st of July to do a public launch in, uh, in Divider. And hopefully at that stage we're ready to sail. It'll be a nighttime launch, but we're hoping to do it with a wing in and ready so you can show the whole boat properly. Yeah. What's the program here in terms of getting this boat? Is it going to be assembled here at Cookson's or are you going to assemble well, it down at the they're, they're dry fitting everything here so that we know it fits. We won't, leave, we won't take it out of here until we know it's basically ready to go. And then we put it all together properly and uh, down at our base. And then we've got to structurally test it and load it up and check, check if it works. So we've got to fit the winch so I draw it, the trampoline. It's quite a lot to do when it gets there. So basically your first fit is, is here, but the, the, the final fit of the assembly is down at our own base. So what's been involved in this project in terms of our in terms of the build and the well, design and the wind. But I think there's something like 40,000 hours for the platform and 25,000 hours for the wing. So 60, and that was about what we predicted. So it's about on hours, uh, 65,000 hours to do it. And you compare that with a version five boat from last time, it was about 20,000 hours. So it's three, over three times as much. What about in terms of design hours? How many did you oh, spend on that? God, a lot of design hours. Nick can answer that better, but we started designing October 2010, so that's over a year and a half ago, about 35 guys at any one time. So it's huge, but I don't know the number. So what are the main features of this boat? I mean, in terms of, you know, when someone's seen an AC45 and they look at, at this boat, what, what are they going to see that's really different? Well, I think you'll see when it goes in the water that, that hull-wise, you know, it's probably not dissimilar to the 45. Uh, structurally it's quite a lot different, but they all will be because there's so much more, uh, so much more load. But just scale, they're just so much bigger. And not just 27 feet long, but just in their whole power. You know, the ton riding that moment is 55 tons. So they're massively powerful. Uh, and, and the public will see something that goes incredibly fast. And, it, and it's big. I mean, it reaches 40 metres long. So the complexity is over a 45 uh, of a magnitude, not just you know, 27 foot bigger. And 11 guys, I mean you could, you could easily use 20 guys to sail this thing. Mm -hmm. When I my first sort of look at it when I saw it up, it's standing up the right way and spaced. It's across, it's a long way to run between each side and when you get there you've got to start working again straight away. Mm -hmm. So do get on to doing a few beep tests because the actual stop start sprints and so, so physically with 11 guys, you, you, it's going to be an issue of who's the right can sail the most efficiently because there's no way in the world you're particularly efficient with that amount of power and complexity with that amount of guys. It's, just, you know, it's a factor of can you be better than the other guys. So in terms of you know, straight line sailing in San Francisco, I mean, from what I've heard, there doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of it. No, we just did a, the corners. We just did a uh, regatta in Venice, and we're sailing within effectively the canals. And there was one race where they were just driving downwind; they, just, they wouldn't even get settled. They just go straight on another drive, you know, and they'd go for ten seconds to stop the drive. And this will be a bit like sailing this thing in San Francisco within the confines of the course. Will be a bit like that. You never ever settle uh, at all. So the manoeuvres or the acceleration out of the manoeuvres and your ability to do the proper or better than the other guys say will ultimately be a major factor. Here you're going to have to be fast, but you've got to have an ergonomically uh, friendly boat that, that is relatively easy to sail based on the sort of power that you've got to play with. The speed that you're expecting to get these up out of what are, what are your BPPs saying? Just oh, you, get 40, you get 40. And, and how many knots have won? Yeah. So they're doing double the wind speed. Yeah, they'll be double the wind speed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'll be fast. Really fast. And what about upwind? What sort of numbers are you looking at? Yeah. 
participating. Uh, no, I don't know. I'm actually not sure. Given the sort of shape of the course, the America's Cup, do you put much of a premium on manoeuvrability and being able to pull and quickly? You have to put a premium on manoeuvrability because there's no point having you know, massive horsepower with massive complexity. You just won't be able to use it. You won't be able to get the wind, pull the wind on enough to pull the power on. Yeah. And you can have the biggest boys in the world, but there's not that many of them and they can't produce enough of anything like enough horsepower yeah. to sail efficiency. So the whole ergonomics of sailing the boat, uh, racing mechanics is what we call it, is, is it's a really critical part of it. Maybe the most critical. So what have you used as a baseline for all that? Is it just no, whiteboard stuff? Whiteboard stuff, yeah. yeah. yeah we've got to do this manoeuvre, what do we think is the best way to do it? How do we power that? No, it's all new whiteboard stuff. We have no, there's no, there is no base for it. You know? So, and basically there are winches that are, that are off the shelf, not similar to exactly what we've used for years now. And you can change the gearing ratios and the range boxes and stuff like that. But, but it's all pretty standard stuff, and then you've got to try and get around the corner with the Jenica. I mean, you miss the furl, yeah. you won't be free. You're going to lose the race. So what happens with the second boat when does that start? Well, they, all the teams are going to start their second boats pretty close to their first boats because you just can't get it done. Um, I mean, I think Oracle seems to be able to build boats really quickly. They can just throw horsepower at it. Mm. Um, but I would expect most people to be starting with second boats in September. Depending on what launch it. Maybe Oracle can wait a little bit longer to launch the boat because they've got more time. But then they say they want to sell two boats down here in February. Yeah. So maybe they can't. Um, I would say September you'll start to see the other guys locking in and stuff. So when do we see two of these out on the harbour? Uh, hopefully in February. Yeah.